Ah, uh, yes. We are back with more ReZero. It's been a while, like three months, and watching this episode made me realize I have forgotten a lot of stuff that happened in Season 1. And this episode of Season 2 was good. I won't say it was one of my favorite ones, because it's just like how dense it was. It was like a ton of setup, a ton of like plot threads we need to advance just a little bit to like set things up for the future. But it was still very interesting. So let's get through it. Uh, my thoughts, my hopes, speculations, crazy theories. Yeah. Uh, first things first, I love like the sunrise at the start with like over the forest. I make that make that my Discord profile pic because I'm rising some reviews. I like cool sunrise pictures. So yeah, we might have to do that. And the part with Otto and Subaru was just fantastic. I love how well Otto knows Subaru. It also feels like Otto knows more than he's letting on. It's, I could just be reaching here, but I'm wondering if Otto also knows the truth about Subaru, that he's been returned by death and just going through that over and over. Because if you see him now, you see like how determined he is, like how confident he is in everything. And it feels like that's not the reaction of someone who doesn't know Subaru all that well. Because assuming he does not know all of this crazy stuff, which gives me another idea. Basically, Otto knew Subaru from the White Whale incident, where they like kind of knew each other, but didn't seem to be that close. Uh, from Otto taking Subaru up to the mansion, and then just their time there, and then basically going to the sanctuary, which, yes, they know each other, they're friends and all that. But Otto's determination to help Subaru and to like call him out and to like really know him, there's a lot there. So it feels like he might know more than he's letting on. Which raises the question, if this is right, why? Well, think about it. Otto's power is to communicate like with animals. So could it be that the animals somehow know this about Subaru? Did Subaru somehow tell one of the animals and then they told Otto? Maybe Patrish. Would that make any sense? I don't know. But I like the theory, so I'm going to go with it. So yeah, a lot of really interesting stuff here. And just like how Otto says all that. So basically beating Subaru up because like he uh, took Subaru down. Subaru got a charge at him and then Otto just like took it around, slammed him on the ground. And that was really cool. Otto is great. I'm like an Otto more and more the more I see him. And there was one line here from Otto that was just really interesting. You know you're not good enough, don't you? just how telling that one line is because Subaru is not he can't even beat Otto in a fight what th does Subaru think he can do to save everyone and that's really the point of this episode and the point of the whole season is that Subaru cannot do it alone he needs all his allies he needs Otto he needs Roswell he needs Ram he needs the pink haired one whose name I forgot he needs Amelia he needs Echidona and the witches and all that too so there's a lot here that I like just how well this come, how well this all came together. And then the Otto's line too, saying, you want to look good for the girl you like, don't you? It, that's just, that's how Subaru is. He wants to put on a strong showing for Amelia. But in doing so, he needs to learn that there's a time to act strong, to inspire confidence. But there's a time to admit you have no idea what you're doing. You're not even close to being able to solve anything. And just ask for help. Admit your weakness. And yeah, so Otto and Subaru are friends. And I just like the scene with Subaru laying on the ground, Otto having his hand out to his heart. That's great. Otto really is best boy. And then we get one of the weirder scenes with Otto basically telling Subaru to like tell him everything that's going on. And Subaru obviously can't because, well, the whole return by death thing. Also, I love the screenshot of the sun rising through the forest with Otto and Subaru there. I think I can make that the video thumbnail. And he does, but I don't know what he says, which makes me wonder, did Subaru tell him about Return by Death? Wouldn't that spawn, like, Satalia's hands to kill everyone? Or would it? That is an interesting question. Because so far, every time that he's told anyone, he can feel Satalia's hands reaching out to grab his heart. But what if Otto is somehow immune from that? Or another option is that because of the encounter Subaru had with Satalia in Echidona's place, I forget what the name of that is, could it be that Satalia is no longer doing it? 
No, it's hard to say. Like, that Satya, like, is raiding in her powers because she does not seem malicious. Probably. There's so much we don't know about Satya. I hope we find out more about that this season. And then we have Subaru busting in to Roswell, basically declaring a bet with their wishes on the line. Subaru is saying he is going to succeed and save everyone. And then if he does, then Roswell has to join him, which seems kind of weird. But I'm wondering why exactly he's doing this. Roswell is the enemy here. He knows about the snow in the Great Rabbit. He has the attack on the mansion. So why does Subaru need to like get Roswell to support him, or at least agree to this now? Is he afraid that down the line, if he starts winning, it'll be too much? Is he like showing too much of his hand here? I don't really get this scene. But it's... Yeah... It's also interesting, too, saying, like, Subaru couldn't forgive him. But at the same time, Roswell has not killed anyone yet because of the time resets. The show is weird, and, yeah, time is a thing. <laughs> and I also love Roswell's comment, commenting on the greed of the situation, or of the solution. Because, well, I mean, Roswell and Ekidona have the added relationship somehow. Some We don't exactly know the details, I think. And I just love how like Subaru, or how Roswell's commenting that Subaru is extremely greedy here. He wants everything. I think that's definitely going to be an interesting way to like look at Subaru through all the uh, seven sins. And, like how he embraces all of them, but he's still a hero in spite and maybe because of it. <sighs> And then we get to the part with Subaru and Ram, where Ram says something interesting. That there's one thing she values above all else, and that will not change. So what is that? Is that Roswell? Or is there something more to her than that? I don't know, it feels kind of simple to just be Roswell, so I think there's more. But then we learn that Amelia does not have her memories, so she keeps like struggling through the trial. And yeah, we get the part with the Ryu, Ryo, I forget her name. But we did find out that there is actually uh, four of hers, of the Ryus. Th uh, three of them that basically take turns caretending to the cloning thing. And the one who is in the forest because of entering the graveyard and basically is kind of teamed up with Garfield. At least that's what it seems like. Yeah, Rizu, that's her name. I Sorry, I forgot that. Which is, yeah, I don't get that much with Rizu. And that's kind of the part I'm least interested in with everything else going on here. But I'm excited to see how it like ties together and all that. But we do learn a bit more about Garfield's family situation. How he also struggles a lot with his past. How he was left behind by his family. And then how Friedrika just left. But it's not out of bitterness toward his mother for abandoning him. But some other reason. And it's also, we learn that Garfield uses his mother's last name. Which makes me wonder, who is his father? We don't have a last name, so I feel like that's going to be a reveal later on. What if it's Roswell? Is that crazy? Yes. Is the show crazy? Yes. Could I be right? Probably not. But I feel like that is going to be an interesting plot point, and I can't really think of anyone else it could be that we know. But they, with the cast of so many characters, oh, we don't know. And then we get a part with Subaru and Amelia, which is just adorable. I love the scene of him walking through and Amelia sitting on the side of the bed with her blanket covering her head. That's just, like, so precious. Good t place to sleep. Sneaking and sleepy just looking at it. It looks so comfortable. But we also just... Like, Amelia is so precious here. I like how she says she like is going to make sure to get plenty of sleep. She's trying to put on a strong su showing for Subaru. And she doesn't, like, want to worry him. The love between them is so precious. In a way, they both have the same flaw. They both think that they can do things on their own and have trouble accepting help from others. And we also learned that Amelia was frozen for quite some time until Puck got her out. But the rest of the people she lived with were never gotten out. We got to look at this in the Frozen Bonds OVA, and though that was after she got out... So the question is, why was she frozen? Why did Puck come save her? Why did Puck not save any of the others? What is Puck really after? But, yeah. Very interesting here. And now skipping ahead, skipping ahead. Hopefully the keyboard clicking isn't too loud here. 
And one another part I'd like here is how Amelia was saying that all these other nobles who want to become part of the royal selection have these big ambitions. Well, for Amelia, it's a Roswell will unfreeze her family or the other else. I don't know if they're her family because she mentioned her mother leaving her, which seems very odd. Like, why does Roswell specifically need Amelia? Why not pick another random girl? There's something more to Roswell's goals as well. Again, which really should not surprise you because it is Roswell. This video is going to be super long. But then we have Subaru reaching out to Puck in the gem on Amelia's neck, basically getting Puck to come out and talk to him, which is weird. Like, why is Puck there the whole time and not doing anything to help? And then Puck comes out to Amelia later on and basically says that he's breaking the contract with her. And... He's also doing so to break the seal on her memory so she can now remember everything. And it just tears Amelia apart to lose Puck, the one person she loves the most and the one person who truly loves her. Well, even more than Subaru, which is definitely saying something because that is Subaru. Though, we still don't know why exactly. And why now? What more is Puck doing? Is he going to come back later and help her? I really hope so, because Puck is great. And yeah, it's really sad. And then Subaru comes back in and wants to hold, or Amelia wants to hold his hand. And again, it's so precious, showing how she needs him. She feels he has something that, she feels she has nothing left. But then Subaru leaves him too when she wakes up so she runs off and i love the flashbacks here how amelia thinks about her mother who abandoned her puck who abandoned her and now subaru who abandoned her and it is so heartbreaking and just going through them saying mother fortunia you liar puck you liar and subaru you liar i mean just feel the devastation in those words and then Amelia's veering off. Posture with Ryuzu, Ryuzu, at least that's implied by Garfield uh, looking where Ryuzu was and noticing two like coffee cups there. But then in the end, Subaru finds Amelia, and that's the end of the episode. Oh yeah, and we also have uh, Otto uh, showing up where when Garfield comes to look and basically saying that uh, he wasn't expecting what happened with Amelia, whatever that is, probably something with Ryuzu. So. And he says that there are all sorts of conspiratorial plans already laid out, which makes me think of the current election, but we aren't going there right now. And basically ask Garfield, well, since the host is left, would you like to play the host instead? Whatever Otto is planning. So is Otto planning something just to help Subaru? Does he have his own goals here? Are things going to get really crazy next episode? Probably. And yeah, that's the episode. Really weird, crazy, all over the place, but good. Not my favorite, though, but I think it's definitely a setup for what will be a great season. So let me know what you thought of the episode, too. What you thought of my theories, what you're looking forward to. So, of course, please no uh, web novel or light novel spoilers in the or in the comments, because I am an only anime viewer. Thank you for watching, though. Subscribe for more if you want to hear what I have to say next week, and I will see you all next time.